all right and welcome folks today we're going to be playing a new game question mark it's a visual novel we're going to be playing raging loop for an hour because we beat um ocarina of time uh, two weeks ago so we're gonna continue on with raging loop and then after that we'll be playing some 40k chaos gate demon hunters and after that i don't know we'll play some game boy advance games we'll see but let's start with raging loop i think it has something to do with werewolves and since it's i think it's in japanese so we'll have to well i'll have to read along bow You know Japanese, of course, but you guys don't. I bid you welcome to the world of this visual novel, Raging Loop. I am nobody special, honestly. Simply consider me part of the interface. You may refer to me as Rococo. You are most likely playing this game for the first time, and I am here to explain a few things about it. This work is quite strange, you see. It's recommended that the uninitiated take the time to read everything here. That's us. <gasps> That's also us. Those uploading their gameplay should at least read the four videos and sharing section. Okay. If you read until the end, you will find a sexy CG of me. I hope this is PG. You'll find a sexy CG of me doesn't exist. We truly do live in a society. They did the thing. They did the society thing. A harsh society, how sad. Now, where should I begin? Okay, let's let's check out. We'll, we'll go through the whole thing. So, Raging Loop is a visual novel. Hey there, Frank. Much like with regular novels, the story is told through text, and the enjoyment comes from reading it. If you are familiar with the party games Werewolf and Mafia, this visual novel bears a close resemblance to those. But keep in mind, it is just that, a resemblance. Oh boy, I don't know what werewolf or mafia is. Lucky, what is this? This is a visual novel called Raging Loop. You had to be there at the start, it explained everything. <laughs> These games are just a mogus, it's true. Sincerest apologies to those who were hoping to play an eternal game of werewolf with 20 super AI Rikokos. I weep and bleed for you, truly. How sad. Of course, this is not merely a novel. As you carry on, you will sometimes come upon choices which affect the story. It's quite amazing. Choices? 
キャラクターたちが生き生きと描写され生き生きとボイスをしゃべります作品世界に没頭できること受け合いです Characters have lively visual depictions as well as voices, making it easy to immerse yourself in this world. Lucky, please explain what choices means. I, I don't know. The game didn't explain it. To enjoy the voices to the fullest extent, Or simply avoid bothering your neighbors with the sounds of anguished screams. Please consider using headphones. This story is obscenely lengthy. Oh boy. As well, so please take care not to be drawn in so thoroughly that you begin losing sleep. Also, you may be aware of this already, but Raging Loop is based entirely around fabricated murders and horrific scenarios.、Oh. Horrific scenarios. Suspense, thriller, horror. So, she, Nazomi, Domi, Kaikets, Sulu, Hanashiga, Oskina, Anatani, Bittarina, Monogatari. It's tailor made for all you fans of suspense, thrillers, horror, and mystery. Oh, I, I hate those. Mochiro, Kono Monogatari, Skrigotode, Jisaino, Jimbutsia, Dantaia, Shisoya, Jiken, Nadotoa. Of course, this is a work of fiction, so it has nothing to do with real people, groups, and incidents. It also includes fictional details about academic matters such as history. Religion, mythology, science, and medicine. Relying upon it during exams would get you zero points. How sad. <laughs> Lastly, we do not endorse replicating the crimes and cruelty depicted in this work. Really? Actually, you know what? Let me just move the chat up. There we go. Now everyone can read together. There's nothing to worry about as long as you dif differentiate between reality and fiction. This is, after all, fiction. I'm sure you are intelligent enough. Not to conflate things that happen in the game world with things that happen in the real life. So enjoy Raging Loop to your heart's content. Okay. Number two special functions. Raging Loop no Doktokna Kino ni Tsite. Setsme i t a s h i m a s ne. Why are we playing more weeb? <laughs> Chipmunk voice.、Uh... Allow me to tell you about Raging Loop's special functions. Raging Loop no story wa Fukazatni Bunkish Teorimas. Do Bunkish Tano Kakandi Surunoa, Taihen Kamo Shirimasen. Raging Loop's story branches out in ways so complicated. It might be hard to follow. Demo Shimpai Muyo. On Sakadewa, Shinario Charta to you, Bendikino Vasayo Saratimas. But there's no need to worry, for we have included a hand function called the Scenario Chart. Menu Hirakeba, Charta to you, Kinoni, it's them access the key. Sokokara Shinario no Zenzuga Mirare no des. You can access it, 
at any time by simply opening the menu, giving you an overview of the scenario. Suddenly, この s c e n a chart を使えば、入ったことのあるチャプターに、いつでもどこでもどこからでも移動が可能。And that's not all. Using the chart allows you to move to any chapter you've already been to, anytime, anywhere. もう選択肢では必ずセーブとは申しません。Now, there's no need to save at every choice you come across. You can simply go back and choose again. There's nothing to worry about. Scenario chart keynote については, また後でもう一度、使いどころの説明がありますので、よくわからなくても大丈夫ですよ。The scenario chart function will be explained again when you have to use it. So don't worry if you don't quite understand it. 次に Next up, keys. Raising grape の物語分岐はすべて選択肢を選んだ瞬間に発生いたします。All branching in the story happens immediately when you make a choice. None of them start taking effect further down the line. その代わり、いくつかの選択肢はキーと呼ばれる特定の情報がないと開くことができません。However. Some of the choices can only be unlocked when you have the specific bits of information called keys. このキーを探すことこそ、レイジングループの大きな目的だと言えるでしょう。Many might say that searching for these keys is one of the major goals in this game. その探し方は、実際に手に入った時に説明があるそうですので、ご心配なく。Don't worry if you don't understand how to search for them. It will be explained when you have one. ちなみに、一度キーを入手して、解放されたルートは、セーブデータと関係なく、開きっぱなしになります。Additionally, keep in mind that all routes unlocked by acquisition of a key will be open even if you haven't saved after the fact. 逆に言うと、キーが未入手の状態には、ロードしても戻れません。This also means that you can't load back to a state when you didn't have the key. So, the you may not have a good show, I must end the day. I'm a little more to a night or more, I must go. Go show to the sign, eh? This doesn't make any scene inaccessible, so it's not much of a problem, but it's something to keep in mind. He got a nice old tiny modest ass, so be tight. To you, she took no cut anywhere. Then they don't show you because of the demo, I must go to you, okay, cock the key. For those commendable individuals who would like to play without any keys again, please refer to the data reset option. Use it wisely. All right, so that was special functions. Let's read the standard functions. What is Raging Loop? It's a visual novel about werewolves and mafia. レイジングループにはノベルゲームとして基本的な機能が一通り揃っています。In addition to the special functions, Raging Loop also has the basic functions you'd expect in any visual novel to have. テキストウィンドウを隠す、バックログ、ロード、セーブ。You can hide the text window, see the backlog, load and save. 記録文章のスキップ、次の選択肢までスキップ。Skip retext, skip to the next choice, and so on. Use demon voice. Hey, right, it's more、uh, Space Marine. Give me a second. Please save manually whenever it feels. 
was appropriate. Whether you've read it to that part that calls for it, or you're about to use the scenario chart. Next are the options. The options allow you to change the volume, text display speed, as well as a few other things. Tada Zembo sits me surto, Minasama go memony not the Simore no de Ato a Hokano sits me gakia, Dareka san no tsuika sits me o no mikudasai. However, explaining it all would make you all very sleepy. So please either read the other instructions or listen to a certain someone's extra option explanations. I'm counting on you, certain someone. Alright, low standard functions. Okay, so this is actually important. Videos and sharing, because we're, we're on Twitch. Raging Loop is a visual novel, meaning that the story, events, and conclusions are very important. Because of this, <laughs> it would be very troubling if someone uploaded everything to the internet. I'd be sad, very sad. Then again, we do understand that those who want to enjoy the work with many other people. Okay, well, this is actually important there. However, we've set a guideline to how far we would like you to upload. This range covers the whole main route and a little extra. Oh, okay, so it's not too bad. Will the FBI show up if you break the rules? Well, we can only upload to that. But nobody said anything about streaming after that. Specifically, you can only upload until choice four, infiltration, Q entering the village. Yeah, four infiltration Q entering the village is the end of the stream. Lucky's going for the world record of reading. He must read all text on earth. That's right. I'm doing it, guys. That's a lot, just so you know. I'm sure you'll have enough content for your uploads. <laughs> I actually... I actually think... It's a bit too much. Uploaders who read everything aloud might get a sore throat. So please don't overdo yourselves, alright? They know. They freaking know. If you intend to upload, please use the reminder function. If you have it on, <laughs> overdo yourself. Okay. When you reach the time to make When you reach the time to stop making a video, a strange sheep hops onto the screen and says end of the line. We would be grateful if you stop recording when you see him and try theorizing and arguing instead. <sighs> Alright guys, let's argue. This function is currently set to off. Put it on! 
また切り替えたいときはゼロ導入のここに来てくださいね。We'll start arguing and burn bridges. Hell yeah, let's go. All right, I'm good. It's a main story. That sure took a while. Thank you kindly for reading this far. I can't believe that took half an hour. That took 20 minutes. Calm down, not like 15 minutes. Beyond the pockets of mist and hazes of blood, at the end of the ever repeating despair and grief, please come and witness the truth of the werewolf village with your own two eyes. Wow. She's a dog. Bow wow. Can't believe that took two days. 511, never forget. I closed in on the side of the road and killed the engine. It was steeper than I thought. My bike was on the verge of giving out, so I pushed down and deployed the kickstand. Why did I laugh at the dumb joke? That's why you're here. Well, I'm lost. Maybe taking a ride down an unknown road with no sat-nav on me wasn't such a good idea. I just followed the road, so I'd figured I wouldn't get lost, but now... I was in some deep. Shh. No, cool it. This isn't a big deal. Aside, took note of the fact that I'd gotten lost in my pocket journal, and then pulled out a map. Suddenly, a rush of memories fitted into my mind. Let's argue. All right, let's take a break and let's argue. Oh, we don't have key number four. How do we get key number four? I don't know. We, yeah, we need a topic though. Suddenly, uh, forget it. We can't, we can't do it. This door stuck. We don't have key four. Why can't Lucky read fitted correctly? Isn't it how you say it? Fit? We can argue about the NHL draft. No, I was so mad. I was so mad. Now I'm not so mad. Now I'm, I've, I've been through the five stages. Now I'm in, um, the last one, which is, I don't remember. The five stages of mad. Yeah. So very mad till, to not so mad. Somehow, I kept myself from remembering those things. After all, I'd gone on this trip to forget. Uh, more. We even ranted about you being mad on my stream. Ugh. Enough of that. I gotta focus on what's happening right now. Life is simple, just like this road. It's dark, and there aren't any guides. But that means all you gotta think about is whether you go forward or back. Can't you just mute the VA? Might as well just put no sound. Going back wasn't an option in this case, so I just move forward. Still, 
I wanted to know where I was, at least. So I looked down at my map. It was all Greek to me. Last time I'd seen a sign, it was still light out, meaning that I'd gotten lost after the sun had set. Sure, it was my own fault for just guessing which intersections I'd been passing through, and that it'd taken me two hours to conclude that I was lost. Crazy to think that just two hours of aimless driving got me almost completely surrounded by mountains. They extended as far as the eye could see. If you flip this scenery upside down and shook it, it's unlikely even a shred of civilization will tumble out. Hey there, Borm, how you doing? Besides the asphalt below, my sweet ride and the lamppost above, the first in a while, mind you, there was nothing man-made here. The pocket map I had wasn't detailed enough for me to figure out where I was. Sisimka. Guess I'll just keep driving. I'd go as far as I could. Worst comes to worst, I could just camp at the side of the road. All right. So main protagonist, I don't know what's, I don't know his name. Bike guy. Two hours later, I deeply regret her, deeply regretted ever thinking that. Basically, camping wasn't an option. This mountain road had no side to camp on. A dump truck, I'd pass barely even fit on it. I'd also had my first close encounters with wild forest animals. I'd already seen two boars and three deer those two hours alone. One of the deer had run parallel to my bike while intently, intently staring at me. And I had no idea what to think of that. I'd felt like it could smell my fear and did it just to make it worse. How dare the thing do that to a human? We're the kings of this planet. Damn it. I'd have to remember to eat some venison. Once I came back to civilization, that'll show them. That'll show the wild. We're the kings. Anyway, camping out here was a bad idea. I'd end up either as roadkill or animal food. I hate deers now. Good. And yet, I didn't back out. Why? Because I'm a pretty warped sort of guy, and I won't pretend otherwise. Is chat warped as well? That was actually the reason why my once comfortable relationship had gone awry. And why I'd gone on this stupid trip. Still, despite acknowledging that, I chose to keep moving forward. It wasn't like I'd find a place to stay if I went back. I was actually starting to think that this experience might make a good conversation piece sometime down the road. It was really getting late at this point. Where would these roads take me anyway? It'd probably be disappointing. Soon enough, the road became flat. I was out of the mountain pass. The forests remained abundant. So I didn't, I still didn't see much. Even so, street lights and signs were enough to make me feel I was again nearing civilization. Was street lights the right expression for lights in a forest? I'd have to look that up. As the road grew less rugged, I realized just how exhausted I was. All this bike handling had left my hands really sore, too. I really had to rest. Suddenly, I saw something unexpected, powerful, colorful, artificial lights. A convenience store? 
Kambini? Flesh mark. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. What does that mean, chat? Hmm? Do you know? I'm not even sure myself. Tabaco? No. Maybe. It was next to an intersection between the road I was on and another. Even thinner road that could probably support only a single car. It says Canadians stay out. Damn. The sea of trees ended, giving room for the majestic child of our consumerist society. Society? Again? Are, are we going to get scathing remarks on society? Yeah, that was an exaggeration. Apparently, even a darn store was a big deal for someone who just stepped out of the wild. It was called Fresh Mark. Marquet? I don't know. I'd seen several of them a few times during the day. It was probably a local franchise. The building didn't look all that old. At least the parking lot looked a lot smoother compared to the roads. This was a pretty weird place to build something like that, though. Was that close to a settlement? Or did they actually make a profit off of lost travelers? I just asked that or something. A local shopkeeper was bound to know what was around these parts. Not to mention, I was thirsty. I was welcomed by a weird chime sound. It looked like a normal convenience store. There were goods on the shelves, counter on the left, and... Whoa! The worker at the counter was so mean-looking, it was scary. She was so imposing, I wouldn't have doubted if someone told me she was in charge of some ladies' army corps. Just, uh... Hey. Was that supposed to be a greeting? It was so darn cold, it actually gave me chills. Can we date the girl? Yes. Was this store shadier than it appeared? Was I about to be stupidly overcharged? Was this how this place made a profit? By taking advantage of lost people and basically beating them out of their money? First girl, we're going for it. That's right. Shit. Crap, that was scary. Clearly, the Wonderland had only begun. Woohoo! I sure was excited for the beating. I grew more nervous and less enthusiastic by the second. Can we date you, Lucky? Only if you're nice. But chat can't do that, unfortunately. I braced myself, but she looked down at the magazine in her hands. Oh, so she was just a slacker. Slightly disappointed. A oh, slacker is ew. Not on my watch. Get out of here. I walked around the store. It was about what you'd expect. There was a small shelf with energy drinks, followed by some stationaries, travel goods, sanitary stuff, etc. There were sweets that came with toys, a shelf of cup ramen, dried food, a fridge, a freezer. It all looked normal. I mean, I don't, I don't remember a shelf of cup ramen in Canada or dried food. We only have wet food. It was late, so the daily dish and packed lunch section was completely empty. The only special thing about this place was the section fill, the section full of unpacked vegetables you'd expect to see at a greengrocer. Greengrocer? Maybe all rural convenience stores were like this. I was slightly surprised by that, but there weren't any local fine foods or anything. So all in all, it was an unremarkable store. 
If you ignored the clerk, anyway. Yeah, grocer of green. Took a drink and brought it to the register. Ha. Huh. Yep, she was really the highlight of this place. What kind of sir? What kind of clerk smokes while dealing with a customer? Y you're actually buying. Yes, I was actually buying. She was the clerk, and I'd be her god, the customer. Really? Hundred twenty-six yen. She didn't even scan it. This exchange was at the mercy of the clerk. God is dead. Maybe I had to get mad at her. Um, can I ask something? Huh? I'm kind of lost right now. I quickly turned meek. Where can I find the nearest town? There. Uh, you don't have a map or something. We don't. <laughs> Man, this woman. I'm not sure I believe that. Convenience stores often get asked for directions. You must have a map nearby. That a rule? Well, we don't have one. Go back to wherever you came from. Well, I've been lost for a few hours now. I don't think I can keep it up for much longer. <laughs> Sleep on the floor or something. She had to be joking. I appreciate the sentiment, but I'd rather be on my way. Are you sure you can't help? <sighs> all right, all right, sweet. The clerk put out her smoke in the ashtray and went to the staff only area. She came back in no time. Found it. So she did have a, more, uh, a map. Of course she did. Even more ill-tempered than usual, the clerk started giving an explanation. This here is the store. Go the north of the crossroads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Find an overpass soon enough. Cross it when you come to a fork next to a giant boulder. Turn right and head straight. So, Lucky, what's your opinion on VNs? I don't do VNs. I only do it for streams. Like, uh, what was it called? Uh, Shibuya Scramble? And this? I don't think it looked good. Another one, maybe. I think I've played like three. Eh, huh? On this road? <laughs> what of it? There's nothing there. There's a settlement, it's just not on the map. <laughs> Do you know any other places? Cut music and don't wait for the for the Japanese VA. I mean, we could do that, but what's the point? There's Fujiyoshi. It's about two hours through a mountain pass. This one's about 30 minutes away. Fujiyoshi seemed to be a village. So this is like Persona 4 where the gas station attendant is the villain? Or she, she got pretty dirty hair, so maybe. Dirty ass! It didn't look 
too far away, but the road leading to it was a huge branching mess. It was clearly just a paved mountain pass. I'd had enough of those for one day and probably just get lost again. I'll go to that one then. Thank you. Money. Excuse me? You didn't pay for the tea. Here's a 500 yen. Hmm. Ding. Rustle. Jingle. Why did you put the change in the collection box without asking me? Having too many coins is a pain, ain't it? Damn. I casually thanked her, grabbed the plastic bottle of tea. She didn't give me a bag, by the way, and left the store. I drank the tea in the parking lot and looked up at the moon. Obscured by clouds, but still bright enough to outshine the light of the convenience store. The clerk put me in a bad mood, though, so I didn't enjoy the sight. I threw the bottle into a nearby trash can and aggressively drove away. So mad. Following the directions, I crossed the overpass and arrived at the first fork of the road. The byway she told me about was really narrow. I probably wouldn't have noticed it if it were not for the tall boulder standing there like a roadside shrine for some traveler deity. Turning carefully, I got on the road. A minute later, I found myself in an even worse wilderness than before. A veil of dead leaves covered the ground. Tall grass sided the path and the sky above was blocked by overgrown shrubs, making it feel like I was passing a wooden tunnel. The road itself was a huge red flag. It was a wonder why I didn't just turn around. Well, he bought stuff with a grand total of 80, uh, 80 euros, 0.80 euros. Did he need a bag? Well, she could have asked. The exchange from before might have pissed me off even more than I thought. Still, I really didn't expect the road to just end. I said 0.80 euros. It happened about 15 minutes in. The view ahead suddenly turned strangely dark, and a split second later, the bike tipped forward. <gasps> I reflexively hit the brakes, but it was too late. I started going down the cliff. My bike tilted downwards, and its suspension was put to the greatest test. Yet, as we basically tumbled down to the bottom, the headlights suddenly shone on some dirt and grass. I knew then that I'd be flung out of my seat. <gasps> Stifling a scream, I tried to work some steering and brake magic to slow down without collapsing. But that was too big of a task for a simple road bike. At the bottom of a cliff, it jumped higher than before, than ever before. The suspension couldn't handle the impact, and I was launched into the air. A moment later, I heard a crash and felt an impact, after which came an unpleasant pain. Darn it. An accident where I was flung out like that was a first for me. The launch was really something too. I did a 360 in the air. So you, you fell back at the same uh, area and fell on my back. 
My breathing stopped for a moment, and the pain was so bad, I thought I all my bones shattered. I did a 360 and walked away. My face and limbs seemed pretty fine, at least, though I wasn't sure if that counted as silver lining. There was grass under my hands. I felt it even through the gloves. That and the smell of green made it pretty clear what I landed on. I pushed down and my hand sunk. This grass growth was pretty hefty. It was probably the reason why it came out relatively okay. Sure, my joints creaked when I stood up. <laughs> I must have had a, a, a bike fall as well, because I do that too. But aside from that, I was fine. It was really dark, so I couldn't really confirm it, but I was pretty sure I wasn't even bleeding. My bike, however, wasn't nearly as lucky. <gasps> oh, boy. It was lying on its side a short distance ahead. The engine was still on. The back wheel kept turning, making an unpleasant fricative noise. Yep, it was busted. Walked up, killed the engine, and took the key. With the headlights off, I was surrounded by absolute darkness. So I just stood and waited until my eyes adjusted. I still couldn't see very clearly. But it looked like this wasn't a cliff. I was still on a road. It was just... It wasn't paved beyond this point. Obviously, a road bike stood no chance against an unpaved road. That woman actually tried to kill me. Zigzagging through the trees, I followed the narrow footpath deeper into the forest. I tried to get my bike up, my bike up and running again, but instantly gave up. It was partially stuck in mud, so there was a risk of it slipping and getting me into another accident. Maybe I had to turn around? The moment I considered that, I thought I saw a faint light ahead. If that woman wasn't lying, this road led to a settlement. Was that close? Reached into my jacket's pocket, took out my phone and opened it up. As you would expect, I was out of range. I ran the light app and shone a light to see better. Though weak, it was better than nothing. At the very least, it helped me watch where I was going. I had no idea how long I'd be walking for. But sure enough, I could see a light beyond the shrubs. It was weaker than I expected. A flashlight, maybe? I could hear water, too. Might have been near a river. Hello! I raised my voice. Hello! Is anybody there? Still declaring my presence, I walked forward. It was late at night. Were I to bump into someone here, the scare would probably take away a few years of our lives. That's why I figured it was best for both of us to let the other know we were there before that happened. However, there was no response. Could they not hear me over the rapids? Hello? I shone my light ahead and realized I'd, make it, I'd made it to an opening. Sure enough, there was a river, or a stream rather. I could slightly, I could see slightly more than I had. While surrounded by trees, straining my eyes, I saw a rocky river beach, a rocky river beach and the shallows. The light I'd seen was on the other side. From what I could tell, it was either a lantern or a flashlight, and it was close to the ground. I didn't see any people, though. No one responded to my shouting, either. 
I wasn't excited about it, but I decided to step into the water. The cold water quickly soaked my shoes and socks. I could have taken them off, but I figured that crossing a river barefoot at midnight was a bad idea. But man, was it cold. Put my phone back into my jacket. I needed both my hands free in case I fell. Not stopping or backing down, I walked towards the light. It suddenly became deeper. The water reached my knees now. It was too close for comfort. Feeling the bottom with my toes and balancing myself, I somehow avoided losing my footing. The flow was fiercer than I expected. If I slipped and fell, I'd probably be washed away. It suddenly hit me that I was doing something really weird, but it was too late to back down. Putting my hands on the boulders and carefully checking what I was stepping on, I gradually made it to the other side. Then, with an unpleasant, wet sound in my every step, I walked up to the light. I could, al I could already see it clearly. Yep. It was a flashlight, lying on the ground for some reason. There wasn't much space here. There was a narrow river bank with a cliff right beside it. As you'd expect, I didn't see or sense anyone nearby. What the hell? Although old, the flashlight was working fine. Strength of the light told me the battery was pretty full. That meant that someone was actually using this tonight, or rather, until just a few moments ago. That was the most logical conclusion. It obviously wasn't left here yesterday afternoon or evening. And yet, the user was nowhere in sight, and I was near a river. Did something bad happen? Did the flashlight's owner step into the stream and get swept away? That was the most likely and worst possible scenario. However, the flashlight was left there practically buried in the pebbles. It didn't seem like someone placed it there to light things up. It was the dead of night. There was no way you wouldn't notice dropping your flashlight when it was so dark. Right. The fact that a light source was left in a place like this was strange by itself. With that considered, what was going on here? What if... What if someone heard my stupid shouting? and decided to lure me in with a light so they could ambush me. Where would they attack from? Above? Konbanwa? Hello? I heard a voice the moment I looked up. The rock cliff was actually made up of several boulders. There was a face peeking from behind one of them. Konbanwa? Uh, hello? Wow, a person! You surprised me! That was my line! Sorry, could you pick that up for me? The voice was... feminine. I finally realized what was going on. So you dropped this? I picked up the flashlight and pointed it at the source of the voice. Ah. A high-pitched voice, slender hands shielding the light. Sure enough, it was a young woman. It's so bright. It was femme. Oh, sorry, this is me, by the way. That's creepy. Don't shine it up from below like that. Actually, 
Oh, this is our name, by the way. Haruaki Fu... Sai... Fusaishi. I think a bit is something of an understatement, then. Yeah, I thought as much. Is this a settlement? That's a difficult question. Can you help me out, at least? Oh. I just need a place to hide from the rain and wild animals, that's all. Hmm. Standing on a boulder, the young woman made a pensive face. Want to come to my place? That was the conclusion she arrived at. Her face told me she was 100% serious. Place, my place. And by that, she surely meant a house, a settlement. Can I? I know I asked for help and all that, but I'm actually desperate enough not to hold myself back. Uh, uh huh? As a man? Yes, I mean, uh, no, as a living being. I spent the last few hours aimlessly driving around. Aimlessly driving around only to fall off my bike. I'm dead tired and I'm at my wit's end here. Oh dear, then what kind of living being would I be if I just abandoned you? And so I was saved. Oh, the beauty of living beings looking out for each other. Anyway, your hand, please. Mm -hmm. hmm? Can't climb up on your own, yeah? True, honestly, I didn't even realize I'd have to. Meeting another person filled me with relief. Which was followed by a sudden wave of fatigue. It wasn't crippling, though. Now, you just need to find a bench, buddy. You'll be fine. She extended her left hand, so I grabbed it with my own left. Her slender fingers were stronger than expected. The girl's name was Chi Ch Chiemi Serizawa. She asked if she was related to the... I asked if she was related to the Sh Shin Sengumi guy, but she said that her family just adopted the name at some point in the Meiji period. Chie. Well, she does have a green... She has a green coat and uh, a yellow top. She was a 21-year-old who went to college far away from here. This was her hometown, and she'd been spending her post-exams vacation here. We chatted about stuff like that once she led me out of the rocky ravine. There was actually a proper path, so the rock climbing was pretty pointless, but I was too focused on my footing to comment. To comment. She told me about herself as soon as we reached solid ground. And what about you? Um, Haruaki Fusai, Fusaishi, Fusaishi, a graduate student at Tokyo College. Ah, so you're a bit older. I'm 24, so three years. I'd say we're in the same age range. Yeah, how come he's not working? At 24, he shouldn't be in an office 16 hours per day. Yeah, don't you dare be formal with me. Alright, well, you can be casual with me too. Can, can I really? I like it when girls are friendly with me. <laughs> well, I know what you mean. I don't like stiff socializing either. Sure, I'll treat you like a friend. 
どうぞどうぞちなみにまだ結構遠い Wouldn't have it any other way. That aside, are we there yet? Mm, not quite. We're like five minutes away. Hang in there, Chief. Ah,、oh, we got Chief zoned. Chief zoned. That is really bad. There better be hentai in there. Okay. Okay, chat. You've been. You've been a bit much lately, all right? What a lively girl. You could tell. You could tell when she was used to people. Also, watch your step and focus on just the light. Any reason? There's loads of pebbles here. It's dangerous. The moment she said that, I stumbled on a rock too, bit, too big to be called a pebble. And it's pretty dark tonight. I couldn't even see the moon anymore. Nodding in agreement, I focused on following the light in her hand. I gotta change. Wait here for a sec. She's gonna change into a werewolf. And so I did just that. Given this was a mountain settlement, I expected some old wooden house, but she actually lived in an apartment block. It was too dark to get a good look at it. All I could see were the cheap looking walls like you'd expect from some old boarding house for students. Also, she lived on the second floor in room 202. Heard some raindrops as we were climbing the rusty stairs, but now it was really pouring. Between that and the darkness, and the large tree right next to the building, it was nearly impossible to see what was going on outside. It felt like I was all alone in a world of nothing but the walls, the door, and the fluorescent lamp above my head.、It、made me feel somewhat helpless. I distracted myself from that by imagining her, by imagining her changing. Eventually, the door opened up. Sorry about the wait. Come on in. All smiles, she showed herself now wearing sports clothes. This was kind of exciting. Japan is so horny. Look at this place. It's completely empty, huh? Yep. We'll get a load of what's in the fridge. Magnificent! Let's drink! Hell yeah! Oh boy. Yeah, her place was really empty. It was just a. Can I stream this? It was just a small room with a low table in the middle, a fridge near the door, and a large duffel bag deeper in. There were two old looking bookshelves too, but they were completely empty. <laughs> you can stream at once. Yeah, pretty much. I wasn't bothered one bit though. Any girl's room was a wonderland to me.、Uh, you, know, you know what? He is Chad. This main protagonist is Chad. Anyway, you went through some big trouble, so I'll drink to you. And I'll drink to you for helping me out. You're a real saint. So, Lucky, what's your opinion on H games?、Uh, well, some people like it, some people don't.、Uh, I am one who does not play H games, but、uh, if you enjoy them, good for you. We opened up our cans, knocked them together, and downed them. Hey, it was actually good. The pleasant bitterness and the refreshing carbonation made for a good combo. Who says that? Man, I love carbonation. <laughs> so good, I live for this. Oh no, she's an alcoholic. 
Come on, you're too young to say that. Yeah, you're right. I'm not despairing for my future or love life yet. <gasps> love life. You hear that? It's the sound of job hunting and it's coming here fast. No, don't say that. You'll ruin my beer. So, Lucky, what is your opinions on the Leafs next season? Why do you care? You don't even watch hockey. She laughed and took a huge sip. It was pretty clear she could hold her drink. That aside, something really bothered me. This might be a little late for this, but can I ask you something? Go ahead. Her cheeks were already red. Maybe she didn't handle her liquor as well as I thought. She had a well-featured face, and I didn't think it was wrong to consider her beautiful. Sure, her clothes weren't the least bit sexy, but I could tell she had some makeup on. To you, I'm just some stranger who says he's lost, right? Yep. And you yourself are a young woman who invited that stranger into an enclosed space and started getting drunk. Man, what time is it? Oh. Don't you think it's dangerous? She kept gulping the drink even as she formulated a response. Time to pull the old Alt F4 ripcord. The very fact that I could just watch her. Oh. Was that? The very fact that I could just watch her do that made it a pretty risky situation, and yet I wouldn't say so. But it's time for a Chiemi Serizawa quiz. Yay. Here's the question. Oh! Wow. Here's the question. My virginity is threatened, yet I don't feel like I'm in danger. Why? What a fun girl. This only made me like her more, increasing the danger even further. Am I allowed to ask questions? Sure. Lucky's getting banned in... Can I just assume... I actually checked prior to this if it was on the ban list. Because I always gotta check with you guys. Can I just assume it's not because I look like a good guy? I hope it's because she's secretly actually a cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Well, I think she's a werewolf. Well, I don't think you look like a bad guy. No, I doubt you're a good guy either. You look experienced with women for one. That unintentional compliment showed that she actually did see me as a potential danger. There are two things, two types of answers to this. Either you expect nothing bad to happen, but wouldn't be bothered if it did, or you actually want something to happen. Hmm. Hmm. It's just that it's that obscure. Nobody had the time to forbid it. Well, maybe. But it's on the games list, so I don't know. I can think of several situations for the former. For example, you're actually on the edge and don't care what's, what happens. Or maybe you're just confident that you can defend yourself. Maybe you know martial arts and can easily kick my ass. What, what did the comment even mean? Experienced with women, potential rapist? Yes. 
Whoa, so logical. Let me guess, you're a scientist. Well, I guess you could say that. Now for the latter. If you intend for something to happen, then... I'm a thirsty perv or something. Wow, talk about not mincing words. <laughs> I blame the boost. Get out! What else is there? I just want the no, the kicker, so we can switch games. Indeed, I'm a werewolf. Say it. What other reason could a woman have to bring a stranger to her home? Would surely be something non standard like. You want to use me somehow. For example, setting me up as an alibi it could be useful to you by attesting that you were here. Wow, that's so shrewd. Or maybe you're a serial killer who brought me here just to get me drunk and kill me. Whoa, I'm some evil mountain witch now. Sounds great. I'll kill you real good. Splosh, splosh. What kind of sound effect was that? By the way, you forgot another case. I did. Yep, I could be a really good person who simply wants to help you. Was it time for me to be ashamed of my filthy mind? Yes. Yes, chat. It's time. Let's take let's take a break and argue. But wait, is that really important enough to risk being assaulted? Oh, you're thinking of assaulting me? I'm just talking in general, you know, the cliche scenario. She stopped talking and turned red. It was so cute, I thought she was actually doing it on purpose. Man, she was drunk. And we were just on our second cans. <laughs> Let's argue about how we're gonna save this channel after the H happens. Uh, well, we'll have to move to YouTube, that's for sure. Or or Kick. I heard Kick is another uh, emerging market. Um, maybe Facebook streaming. <laughs> Delete VOD, ban all chatters who mention it. Um, how about this? If I don't let you stay here, something even worse would happen, and I'd feel real bad. Hmm, care to elaborate? There's some scary wild animals around here. He might have gotten torn up and killed. That would have left a bad taste in my mouth, so I figured I'd just let you stay here instead. Lucky moves to Pornhub Live. Might as well at this point. Let me see, so you're balancing risk and goodwill. Didn't expect that. Really now? Do you have any idea how much of a bad guy you seem now? I do. I mean, you assumed that I was a thirsty perv, a serial killer, or needed an alibi before considering I was just a nice person. You're the one who brought up the perv thing. 
details, details. So what's the right answer? So we're not just messing around? Get it right and I'm giving you a nice present. Get it wrong and you're dead. Seriously? Uh... You're desperate. You need an alibi. You're a thirsty perv. You'd feel guilty if you let me die. Three. We're gonna die, aren't we? You're right! Woohoo! That's it, I'm pulling out. I'm pulling. Get me out! Get me out! Well, actually, we, we do have to stop though. We'll save. We'll keep it for later. No stop. No, it was it was supposed to be just for an hour. So yeah, we gotta stop. Yeah, it's just an hour today. Just uh, this game. All right, so that was uh, a rising loop. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Um, boy, oh boy. Sure hope I don't lose my channel. <laughs> Lucky please. What was the problem? You guys, you guys want to see more? You want to see what happens here? <laughs> We're ending at raging boner. Exactly. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the title. All right, so that was uh, raging loop. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I will probably continue this next month. Maybe if the channel still exists. And um, we're going to take a small break and then segue into um, 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. So tune into that if you're interested. And you stream 40 minutes of tutorial. Yeah, well, but we went like 20 minutes above. So above what we were supposed to so we'll uh we'll end it here for reading loop for tonight see you later youtube